flight checklist. Pre-flight checklist. Oxygen. Tested 100%. Tested 100%. Navigation, transfer, and display switches are normal and auto. Aviation is inherently unkind of mistakes. The process of using the checklist and working as a crew and communicating clearly with the advances in aviation technology over the last 30 years has made the aviation industry so much safer. And the way that we use the checklist is a challenge and response. So you perform the switch movements that you're supposed to do, and then you come back with the checklist and verify that the most important ones that are really going to get you in trouble have been moved to the correct position. And it just gives us an opportunity to work as a team and to back each other up and make sure that we don't let one small mistake become a bigger mistake down the road. It's interesting to see how much overlap there really is between how we do business in the fields and how we do business in the aircraft. We ask ourselves, what's the one thing that we could do to really make a difference? If we had a way to understand, are we actually doing the things we want to do on a daily basis? To be able to verify that with an objective approach, that would be a really good thing. And we developed the fuel verification process. Here at Kaparik, we're uh, producing oil and gas, uh, primarily to ship crude oil down the Trans-Alaska pipeline. Uh, we have a number of operating facilities, uh, processing facilities and drill sites. And uh, there's always a high level of activity going on around the field. As you can see, the environment here is very challenging. We definitely want to make sure that folks are operating in a safe manner. The life-saving rules and the verifications are one of the key tools that we use to do that. The core of that verification is a conversation between um, the person performing the verification and the, and the person or, or people executing the work in the field. So that checklist just simply serves as a tool to help ensure that all the minimum requirements are discussed. Sometimes there are situations arise where we have problems and uh, by having a discussion, we're able to work together with ConocoPhillips or our management to eliminate hazards. The verification process itself, although it uses a checklist to guide what you talk about, the true value is in that conversation and are people actually getting it? It's a two-directional learning opportunity. It is something that we use to try to more effectively on a personal basis communicate our understanding of the risks that are involved and, and what's appropriate and how to mitigate those risks. At the same time, we're hearing back from the workforce and the workers on those individual jobs what their challenges are. It's a recognition that we're all human. At times, we will all forget or make an error. There's a day when you find yourself slightly distracted about something or maybe you're fatigued. You know, while you've done it correctly over and over again, that one day you might miss something. That checklist is a filter to help you catch that mistake before it goes down the hill and becomes something bigger. What's very important is to have an in-depth discussion about the details of what they're doing and then to document anything that you find that might raise some level of alarm or concern. Is their behavior changing as a result of those conversations? I think that's the true measure of whether the life-saving rule verification process is effective. Are we seeing behavioral changes? And from my own experience here, I'll say yes, uh, because I get a very different cultural feel and a very different level of feedback now than we did two years ago when we first started the process.